Hello my friends and welcome back to Final Fantasy 13 2. This is Fuzzfinger and today we're going to be doing some optional stuff. However we're going to need to unlock a gate first of all back in Academia 400 AF. I know how much you love this place so I thought we had to return. There's also an optional fragment we can collect that's on our way to the next gate. So presumably you're going to have, uh, be starting at the same position that I am which is the gate we finished at. And we're just going to be heading first of all to Chocolina around this area since she's just down south and we just need to head there for the fragment. Which like I said is on the way to the gate so we may as well collect it while we're there. And the new gate we're going to is going to unlock for us Yashas Massif 100 AF. So make sure you have a wild artifact since that's what we'll need. If you've been following uh, my videos then you should still have at least two in your inventory at this moment. And as you come round here, you'll find that you will enter the uh, battles again that we had before. And if you remember, you can't actually escape them once the mod clock comes up. So you can either fight through them, uh, aim for a preemptive strike, or run as far as you can before you enter battle, so that you don't have as many to fight. Obviously, doing that, you won't get a preemptive strike. Now you'll have to jump down that ramp. Uh, it will be facing the wrong way, so you'll have to jump to get down it. Keep jumping. And then when you get to the bottom, use your Moogle Hunt ability to find the fragments. So that ramps just north of Chocolina. Once you have that, you can head back up. And then again, jump down the ramp on the other side, the blue ramp. And we'll be heading towards the gate. So you'll find the southernmost eastern passageway. Or well, the southernmost passageway that leads east, I should say. And then, once you reach the end of that, just hop round uh, to another ramp, which is now going west, and do the jumping manoeuvre to get down. And then you just want to head south when you can. And you can see the gate. And like I said, the gate, once activated, will let you access Yashas Massif 100 AF. Which is the last pe time period available for Yashas Massif. So when you're at the Historia Crux and the area is available, we'll visit there next. The ancient city of the Farseers has become the site of a terrifying phenomenon. The first stage was a noticeable disruption in the local space-time. Next, members of the Academy research team began to vanish, one by one. Finally, as if to replace the missing people, floating crimson spheres appeared in their stead. It was not long before rumours of the Padra Ruins curse started to spread. So there's seven easy fragments for us to collect here, to add to our total, as well as a wild artifact to replace the one we've just used to access the area. So that's not too bad, is it? We start off in the Pandaria Archopolis, or whatever this area is called, I think it's something like that. And you'll want to head down past the command centre where we saw Doesn't Hope and Elisa earlier. This area would be so dangerous. And in the main square of the area, you'll be able to find uh, the quest giver. But before we do that, I think there is a quest item we can loot just around here somewhere. For a quest which we haven't yet picked up, but it will be helpful for when we do, so we don't have to come back here. Uh, it's just over here to the left, I remember now. There it is. So the treasure chest here contains the Bulb of Hope, which we'll be using for the second side quest uh, in this area. So we'll just loot that now before we move on.
Okay, and now we can head to that first quest giver. So just down this ramp. My previous boss was transferred here from the Brescia room. He was a nice man, and he took care of That person will have something to say for us later, but not on this visit. So it's another one of these big red ruby balls. And we need to go into the Pass of Padra area to collect that quest item. But before we do, there's another quest item for a quest in this area which we haven't yet collected. I know it's all confusing, but just bear with me. Uh, we can get this item before we move on. So I'm just trying to cut down on some travel time. Now it is around here somewhere. I just have to try and remember where it is. I'm not sure if it's up these ramps, so if you're following me at the moment, don't come up just yet. Just trying to see if I can get a view of it. I'm pretty sure it's down below, actually. Yes, there it is. I can just see it under the ramp. If we just head on back down. And we just need to get into a position where we can use our Moogle to collect it. Probably around here. That looks like it'll do. Okay, so we'll keep that item safe for now. So when you're ready, you just want to head up the ramp that leads out of the area. There's a gate seal just over there you can see. Again, just use Mog to collect it. So we want to head to the dead end uh, that's just east as we come down. And there's a treasure chest that we can collect then. Although if we just go back here, there is another quest item we can collect in advance, just up on this uh, precipice over here. By the way, that enemy I just entered battle with is a bunker beast and I highly suggest you collect one as a monster crystal since it's a very good sentinel it's not too expensive to level and it will finally be able to replace the sentinel we collected at the start of the game so we can say goodbye to the pulse knight once you have a sentinel uh, once you have a bunker beast when you get down to the bottom of this passage use your moogle hunt and this is the quest item we need for the quest we've actually picked up By the way, when you're farming for that bunker beast, you need to realise that it's the only monster in the game that I know of, I could be wrong, that's easier to catch where well, you have more chance of uh, collecting the crystal while it's staggered. Now, you can't actually do any damage to it while it's not staggered, really, since it has its shell. So, you should pretty much kill it while it's staggered anyway, but just bear that in mind. When you have it, try and level it up to about level 20. Unless you've been using all your monster materials and other monsters, then uh, you should be able to do that quite easily with what you've already got. And also, you might just want to infuse your old Pulse Knight into the Bunker Beast uh, for the Mediguard ability, since it doesn't come with it. And then just approach the Ruby ball thingy magic whatever it is uh, to hand the quest in there's our first fragment nice and easy one now we want to interact with the next 
uh, the next ruby ball thingy magic. I don't know what they are. They're supposed to be some dead people or something, aren't they? But why they're big red balls, I have no idea. Okay, so it's just by this chocobo over here. If you pick the quest up, you can hand it in straight away. For some reason, I don't, so I have to come back. But you'll definitely want to just hand it straight in. Uh, once you've done that, start heading to the west. And stay north when the path splits. You'll want to go straight around the area that you can only reach with the chocobo. We don't need to go up there today. And you can see like a crack in the map. Uh, in the centre, there's an item down there that we need to collect. Just can't remember what side we have to stand on to reach it. Oh, it's just over here when you use Mog. And this will actually give us a fragment. So this item isn't part of the quest, it's just an actual fragment that we collect. Very nice. And now I've realised that I actually need to go and hand the quest in that I didn't already do so, when we picked it up. Uh, if you don't hand the quest in, then you can't collect the next quest. I'm just going to be on my way back now to the quest giver. You don't need to come back where I'm going now if you've already handed it in, since we'll be coming straight back to this area once I've done so. <laughs> By the end of this video we're going to be spending our uh, Crystarian points as well, so you'll probably want to collect about 20,000 again as we did before but wait until we've done all these side quests and everything like that before you do any farming to reach that so I've now got another fragment I think that's three including the one we've looted isn't it and the seven as I said to collect in the area so a few more to go yet So we need to come back around this area and start heading south for the next red ruby, circle, ball, whatever it is. We've already got the item that we need to hand in though, so it's just a case, once again, of uh, collecting the quest he has for us. Or the quest it has for us, and then handing it straight back in. So when you reach this fork, you want to head east, and then south. And there it is, we can just see it now. So speak to it a couple of times until you've got the fragments. Okay, so now we've got that easy fragment. We're just going to carry on down south to this paradox. And unfortunately we've got a hands of time puzzle. If you haven't come across one of these before, then check the video description and I've put a link in there which will actually help you solve the puzzles if you get stuck. Uh, anyway, when you're done with the puzzle, speak to the gate to activate it so we don't have to return later by running all the way back down to use it. You'll need to use your wild artifacts, your final wild artifacts. I think it's the last one, maybe we've got another one. Either way, this will unlock the Sudden Death Waterscape 400 which will be the focus of the next video, another optional area with another set of easy fragments to collect. But we're still not done in the Ashash Massif 100, so return there for now. And on our return, we can start heading north again. You 
should already have 100% exploration on the map from the previous uh, Yashas Massif area that we visited, but you can also collect it here if you haven't. Just look for any nooks and crannies that you might have missed. Actually, there is a weapon we can loot just up the path. So stay to the east as you're heading back north. And we can loot the Blessed Blade for Null. It might not be an upgrade. It does give a boost to the magic stat if you're using him as a Ravager a lot, but really he should be a good he should be a commando since he's got a naturally high strength stat anyway. Therefore I'm not going to use that weapon. I'm happy with what I'm already using, which I believe was bought from Chocolina. When you reach the final fork before heading towards the village, you can go west to find another ruby quest giver. Same thing applies to speak to it. You've already got the item if you've been following the guide, and so you can hand it straight in again. And now we can return to... Yes, you can see the waypoint that's just popped up, the blue waypoint in the north. It's actually another uh, vortex paradox thing that we're going to have to solve with another hands of time puzzles. So we'll head there now. You'll find the uh, paradox just down the ramp as we enter the village area. Was it really an ancient war that destroyed the city of Padra? So you can see it just down to our left here, and if you want to interact with it when you're ready. And there we have it, that's our final fragment for this area. Along with 500 CP and another wild artifact, so not too shabby at all. Right then, so farm any CP you might need, I'm well over the 20,000 that we actually require. And when you have it, go to the Crystarium and let's start spending points. And as usual, we'll start with Sarah. And we'll be investing one point into her Ravager role, levelling it to 63. 13 points into her sentinel roll, levelling her sentinel up to 38. And finally, we're going to put 16 points into her saboteur roll, levelling that up to 93. Great, and we're going to give her the accessory capacity bonus. I do advise that you use those capacities, that you give them accessories and that, if they can use them. And so for Noel, we're going to put 5 points into his commando speciality. So we're going to put his commando up to level 81. We're going to level his Ravager to 61 with 11 points. And we're going to level his Senator to 40 with 7 points. 
And finally, we're going to level his synergist to 57 with 7 points. And for his roll bonus, I think I'm going to unlock the saboteur roll. Okay, and that's it for the Crystavia. Nicely leveled. And remember, make sure you level your bunker beast up, your new sentinel. He will come into play uh, quite a few times now. And he can actually, if you level him up all the way, he can definitely be a, an end game viable sentinel. Even for the optional harder bosses. So he's definitely worth putting points into. So for next video we're going to be going to the Sun Left Water Escape 400. I've been Fuzzfinger, thank you for joining me. I'll see you next time.